Thank you everybody for signing on for today's webinar from Yaskawa. I am Josh Leith. I'm the product manager for welding robotics here at Yaskawa. And today we're going to be looking at the Fabtech preview for what you can expect here in a couple weeks in Chicago. Uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, do a quick poll on how many of you are planning on attending Fabtech this year. This could be one day, all week. Maybe you are actually uh, displaying a booth at Fabtech this year. I uh, just want to get a gauge for uh, how many of you are already planning on going and even how many of you are undecided. We'll have a great team of technical help at the show as well as our sales team, uh, regional sales managers. So lots of people there to available to uh, ask questions, answer questions, and hopefully lead you in the right direction when it comes to robotics. So I'll go ahead and end the poll. Looks like about half of you are planning on going, 27% um, no and 27% undecided. So hopefully for the 27% undecided, we'll be able to convince you today that it's uh, worth your time and worth your employer's time. So the show this year is November 11th through 14th, Monday through Thursday. It is in Chicago at the McCormick Center, of course. Uh, we are gonna be in the North Building, which is your welding and finishing area. Inside the North Building, there are lots of great vendors, including all your major weld supply companies, uh, power supply manufacturers, accessory companies. But if you're entering through the main entrance and head down that center aisle, we're about halfway down. You'll see us right next to uh, Miller, Praxair, Abicor Benzel, Airgas, uh, some other great welding companies, again, that uh, we can help you uh, integrate with their parts and answer any questions. If you take a look at our booth, this is kind of a CAD layout of uh, what we're planning for the show. Uh, we're gonna be showing collaborative robots, uh, a lot of arc welding, some spot welding applications. We also have a laser seam stepper we'll take a look at here in a moment from IPG that will be on display. We'll also be showing off some vision technologies, service options, and a lot more. To look at each of those individual displays, and again, this will just kind of give you a taste of what to expect in our booth. Uh, first up, though, we have the HC10 hands-on demo. So we actually have three HC10 set up with somebody from our technology advancement team being able to coach you through how to use one of these robots. It's extremely simple to learn. You have a smart pendant on uh, at least two of these robots, as well as a lead to teach. So we'll teach you how to use that smart pendant. Our smart frame technology, was, which is a patented technology that makes the uh, XYZ coordinates uh, much more simplified. Um, and then as far as uh, all your other programming techniques that can be done with that smart pendant. The direct teach is actually done by the robot itself, so you lead the robot arm to teach it, and we'll have some uh, different activities there you can do to, again, get a hands-on feel for those robots. Also, kind of center stage in our booth, we're gonna have a Arc World 6200. This is one of our pre-engineered arc welding cells. This is actually gonna be a new concept layout for us. So we've changed the, the design a little bit, the floor space uh, that it takes up. Uh, we want your feedback on this. So I'll be at the booth, uh, of course, all, all days of the show. Uh, give me your feedback, what you like, what you don't like, uh, some changes that you'd like to see before we put this into production. This is gonna show two of our AR1440 robotic arms. We'll also be teaching you how to use our new universal WeldCom interface in this cell. So we'll have a live demo with Miller hooked up to it. We'll also be showing a Lincoln setup for their Lincoln servo torch for aluminum applications. We also have a lot of new options that are available with this cell. So for example, we have a roll up door uh, that can save on floor space with that option. Uh, we'll also be showing off our new Proface HMI. So we have a standard HMI that works for most customers needs, a talking light stack, LED cell lights, and a lot more going on with this cell. Uh, this is also a precursor to a new Ferris wheel style positioner that will be released next year. So we'll be tailoring the cell around that positioner uh, for that new product release. We'll also be showing a Jigglist mixed method welding cell. So traditionally we'll show something on the lines of uh, resistance welding, spot welding, with a couple of our larger spot welding arms but this is actually gonna have three arms. So one arm will actually be used to manipul manipulate a part. Uh, another arm will have a laser seam stepper on it, and you can come to the show to learn as far as what the advantages of the laser steam, seam stepper is compared to spot welding, and then an ultralight spot gun on the third robot. Um, this is 
ideal for the next generation agile manufacturing, and that minimizes tooling and changeover costs as well as time. So great for small, medium manufacturers, uh, even large manufacturers doing R&D and manufacturing support. Another demo, uh, which has been a popular demo for us for the last couple shows, is 2D Vision with our GP8 uh, manipulator. This shows off the speed and accuracy of the GP8. The 2D Vision uh, in this cell actually looks at dominoes and can look for marking on parts, for example, such as QR codes or uh, other patterns on parts. But it's very ideal for machine loading, sorting, and other fast-paced tasks. We'll also be showing off three of our new welding robots. So these are three arms that we've never offered before as standard welding arms. One is the AR1730 that has about just over a meter and a half reach, but a 25 kilogram payload. This is also a very fast robot, so it's going to be very good for applications, perhaps where you have a heavier torch payload or a torch and a gripper on the end of the robot where you actually have to manip manipulate parts while arc welding. We'll also show two of our smaller robots, the AR700 and AR900 with eight and seven kilogram payloads respectively, which are great for smaller parts and uh, cells with a smaller footprint. Connected throughout the entire cell, we're gonna be showing off Yaskawa Cockpit. Uh, we continue to uh, innovate and revitalize as far as this product with new revisions as customers give us feedback of what they wanna see in their data metrics and provides real-time visualization of the status, health, and performance of your devices. And it's gonna be tied to multiple cells in our booth. So we'll have set up, iPads set up throughout the booth. They can see what's going on in the booth, how the robots are running, uh, what the maintenance schedules are for those robots, alarm codes that are thrown, uh, anything that you would need in a live manufacturing environment. Now we'll also be demo demoing ways to collect and analyze your data. And this doesn't have to be from Yaskawa Arms. It could be from drives and motions controls as well as uh, other pieces such as welding power supplies that give you that, that data that, uh, again, you can combine and analyze with the rest of your cells. Uh, also at the show, we'll be showing how to get you a 15-day free demo available for anybody that's currently running Yaskawa robots. I mentioned before, we'll be showing off our universal Weldcom interface. This is Yaskawa's new welding interface. Uh, with this, we'll be showing off how you can utilize the pro process selection table uh, different arc on and arc off by condition file or custom tags with your inline inform code. Uh, we have arc condition files with graphic help screens, screens now built into this for easy training for your employees that might understand uh, welding but don't understand robots. This has a lot of existing functions with our previous weld interfaces that we've integrated into UWI and even has new features such as the new dynamic start and dual pulse functions. You can kind of see in the corner there uh, what we did with a very basic power supply using a dual pulse function for that stack uh, dime tick-like appearance. This is currently available with Miller and Lincoln power supplies from Yaskawa, and we're working on uh, adding several other brands to this Universal Weldcom interface. This is also nice if you are a global company and you want to be able to utilize one common interface and in programming for all your robots worldwide, even though they might not be tied to the same brand of welding power supply. Next we'll have, uh, again, we've shown this at a, another show recently that was a very popular demonstration, but it's our HC10 machine loading. So again, the HC10 is our collaborative robotic arm and the H HC10 will be loading and unloading parts. Those parts are laid on a table by the human for the robot to pick up and put into the machine, but also then replaced from the, by the human uh, taken off the table. There's a camera overhead that figures out the orientation of these parts and then the uh, robot aligns itself to be able to pick those up. This will also demonstrate speed separation uh, to show the full industrial speed of the robot as well as a safe collaboration speed. So it kind of shows what these robots are capable of in a machining environment uh, with and without humans around. Also in our booth, we'll have a team from Yaskawa Support Services and they're gonna show you how to get the most out of your robot. They're gonna be talking about repair and reconditioning options for our robots, spare parts programs, different accessories that they offer, as well as retrofits. So if you have an existing robot, you want a different brand of welding power supply on, how they can help you out with that, as well as all of their classroom and video training options. Also in our booth, we're gonna be showing a 3D printer from Yaskawa Drives and Motions. This was at Fabtech and um, IMTS last year, but we've actually improved this machine 
uh, to be faster, more accurate, and it uses Compass, which is Yaskawa Drives in Motion's newly developed graphical user interface for intuitive machine operations and customizable user control. Uh, they'll also have information and demonstrations with some of their latest and servo motor technology uh, and controls available from, uh, again, Yaskawa is the world's largest motion control company uh, for servo motors. Last thing I want to highlight today is our partner booths. So we're gonna have robots throughout the show floor. Uh, some interesting ones I'd like for you to take a look at when you have time. Air Gas, which is one of our neighbors in the hall. They'll actually have our, our brand new Arc World LC, which stands for light cell. Uh, with this light cell, it's a two table uh, manual cell. So this is meant for more job shops or R&D use. It's a very low cost cell coming in under $70,000 resale. Um, they'll also be doing a giveaway with a trailer hitch cover for this cell. So come check this out, an outstanding value with a great weld package on it, as well as a high quality Yaskawa robot. At Servo Robot, we'll be showing the latest, uh, actually Servo Robot will be just demonstrating the latest laser seam tracking technology. They'll have one of our arms there with their laser sensor attached to it. They'll also be showing their new pendant application for Yaskawa robots. So this is something in the past you'd have to do separately from a PC that they have, have integrated into our, our pendant control. Goodle will also be at the show with their tracks, and they're gonna have an AR1440 on a vertical track. This system can replace two to three robots with a single robot on a lift. So this is great for applications like uh, painting or laser ablation, uh, finishing, even welding work. So lots of different applications where you can raise a robot uh, several meters in the air uh, with just, again, a single robot, single power supply. Lastly, uh, JR Automation is going to have a couple of our robots. One of the more interesting applications will actually be a Yaskawa robot with a MIG welding torch, as well as a gripper. Again, I mentioned on our 1730, this is ideal for higher payloads, uh, but you can actually have two processes going on with the same robot in order to finish parts. So if you're uh, welding parts and need to add parts midstream, this is, would be a good solution for that type of application. So that is all we have today. Again, quick preview and overview for uh, what we will be displaying at Fabtech and what you can expect at the show. Uh, we do have some questions in, so I'm going to uh, review these questions here briefly and uh, be able to answer them for you. So we have a question from Regis. Uh, what is the welding process in the 3D print machine? Uh, this is actually not a welding process, but with uh, Fabtech, they have a large presence of additive manufacturing. So in this 3D print machine for rapid prototyping and other applications, uh, this would be relevant to the additive manufacturing side. So again, Yaskawa Drives and Motions would be our servo motor side of the, the business. So this 3D printer is controlled entirely by Yaskawa Drives and Motions controls and servo motors. It's a very impressive machine. It's very fast. At the time of build, they're telling us it's the fastest in the industry. Uh, so be sure to stop by and check that out. Uh, another question from Charles. Uh, can you speak further about the laser, laser seam stepper technology? Uh, yes, I'd be happy to, Charles. Uh, so laser seam stepping is a laser head that we mount basically on a spot welding robot. And it kind of takes the place of a spot gun. The advantage that this laser seam stepper has is that it's a what they call a picker style gun. So I only have to be on one side of the surface that I'm welding. Uh, with this one side of surface, I can actually do different, uh, say designs, uh, as we call staples into the, the metal uh, by applying pressure with that laser head down into the metal part. Uh, the remote laser does its action to apply heat. So I have heat and pressure, pressure on that metal part to uh, finish that weld. Where this is very relevant is on very large parts where it's not, um, feasible for me to use a very large C style resistance uh, spot gun for the weld. I can actually come to the center of that spark, excuse me, the center of that part with this laser gun, apply the pressure, make the weld and do so very quickly. So uh, it requires less power than spot welding. Uh, it's faster than spot welding, albeit your initial investment's a little higher, but it's uh, kind of a, a way of the future for spot welding that a lot of automotive manufacturers are moving towards. Uh, one other benefit of this is it does not require a light tight enclosure like many other laser welding technologies do. It's all done at the head of the at the head of the gun. And 
Looking briefly here, if we have any more questions, I don't have any at this time, so please send those in after the show. Um, you're welcome to send them at any time. We'll actually answer via email for you. Um, feel free to reach out to me as well at joshua.leith at motoman.com. That's J-O-S-H-U-A dot L-E-A-T-H at motoman.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions directly. And uh, please come find me in the booth, too, and let me know that you heard us on this webinar webcast. Thank you all, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at Fabtech.